Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, we are looking at Kyler Murray, Arizona Cardinals. What the front door happened versus the Rams, besides just the Rams in the playoffs. Fired up for this one. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. Kyler Murray playoffs versus the Rams. First one here, third and six. Never in history ball up top. Close, not close enough. Love the matchup. Kind of like the aggressiveness. My Manny Jarrell loves the defense. Really just fortunate that this thing comes out flat from his hand. Watch this trajectory here. Man, that thing is just low. Love to see a little bit more touch to give him more room for air. Again, that thing comes out flat. Love the aggressiveness. Third and six right here. Announce your presence with authority. Hit this thing with a go. Great. We've talked about this a number of times on the channel. A perfect throw is right down the line. Well, a perfect throw is stacking. First of all, the route needs to be good enough where you're up. Vertical sell. Get outside. Stack this DB so that he's now behind you running. So as you kind of go together here, the perfect throw is right down the line. So you can just run right through it. And then you, you have this small window. Now, the worse the route, the smaller the window. So if you get pushed to the sideline, you lose that window to be able to throw that thing in. The other thing from the quarterback's perspective here, and again, this might not be on Kyler Murray. This is probably more on the offensive design, pass protection. This is a five-step drop. So versus this look that they got all day, five-person rushing, trying to create one-on-ones for their big defensive line up front, to me, it makes you late on these types of go balls and late meaning that you're running out of real estate as far as your capacity to make this accurate throw. So it comes out flatter versus more Russell Wilson, like dropped out of the rafters, you know, real high trajectory ball that allows your receiver, if it's not perfect to adjust and fade back to it. So again, just little things here, but when they're combined third and six playoffs, it's a big completion. It's just out of bounds. So again, check the dropout. Catch, one, two, three, four, five. Nice base. That thing comes out flat. Again, the, the route is not great. See him get pushed to the sideline. Now, I'm assuming this is a go. This might be some bizarre double move, which is not very good. Yeah, it is a little double move. But he gets pushed to the sideline. Nice job by the DB. But the quarterback's got to give him a chance to catch that ball and bounce. Got to. You cannot have a never-in-history ball. Never in history ball is a ball that is thrown and never in the history of football has it been completed out of bounds. Got to give your guy a shot. Nothing you could do there wide receiver wise. Once that ball is in the air, it's just too far wide. Next one, third and 11. We got some pass pro issues. We've got a scramble opportunity here. Could have been a massive play. Again, they're bringing five person pressure with a little game up front. This has got the chance to be an absolute dynamic play. Backbreaking play on a tough down and distance. Again, you're not gonna have all day to throw when they're bringing five and they're five or they're five for the Rams. You're just not. So it's collapse. You gotta get out of there. 50 yard throw on the run and it's really close to being there. And again, this is not hand grenades. So it doesn't matter that it's really close, but this has got an opportunity. Watch this post from down here at the bottom. You know, is mailbox, you know, theoretically, I'm not gonna pretend to tell you what the read is, if we would have had a little bit of time, and let's just assume that this is for the bones of four vertical seam go, some sort of vertical up here, you know, and you catch closed here, you know, this has certainly got a chance. And he eventually gets there and this thing kind of bleeds into a deep post scramble. But man, you, you there were a few just straight up misses. And again, it's impossible to know unless you're in the quarterback room, what the read is here. And does he have enough time, you know, to take three one, two, three, rip that seam down here to the bottom. You'd have to really anticipate that thing. You know, he's already out of there. You'd be getting thrown. You'd throw it and get hit. And again, Donald destroying the left guard, destroying the back. Get out of there. He lets that thing go from just over the goal line. And it is really close to being a special play. Really special play that kind of probably catapults them back into this game. So again, you can see how close it is, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, again, when you turn on this film with the Rams, it's almost, it's really hard not to watch 99. It's kind of like ball watching on the broadcast view. He is just destroying cats. 
but that is so close. I mean, if he if he makes this a perfect throw, this is kind of a career type throw. So close. Next one, sack. This is a tough one for me. We've got a deep flag down here to the bottom and an over. You know, it's not, you know, obviously we've got some pass pro issues. You got Vaughn Miller playing at a high level playoff run on our right, our right. I personally think he could have thrown either the flag or the over. I think he gets a little statue-ish back there. And again, I, I don't want to feel like I'm talking out both sides of my mouth because you know, sometimes you got to scramble, sometimes you got to stand in there, sometimes you got to move within the pocket. But right here, we're going to catch what, what I'm going to call a deep flag. So you're up and you set this thing to the deep flag. It's not a corner. I think corner, more like 10 yards, run to the corner at a specific kind of landmark, like 25 yards on the sideline. This is deeper. Pair it with an over that probably has the capacity to throttle in space. So if it's zone, you don't want to run to get covered. You want to kind of find that sweet spot in the underneath hook defenders and kind of throttle there. So for me, I really think he could throw this. I think he spins the half field defender down here. Whoever's playing the half field down here, baseball turns this thing. Or he could have come to the over, settling down. Two things. And then the final thing that's really tough is he just, he's like a statue back there. He's just stuck. And maybe there, he couldn't move around for whatever reason. Something bleeds into his vision. But man, let's rip that deep flag down here to the bottom. Okay, watch the baseball turn. Is that Weddle? Baseball turn right there. Throw that flag down here to the bottom. Otherwise, look at the over. If you can't wait for the flag, throw the over. One, two, three. No to the flag. Yes to the over. And I don't, and you got to get it up and down before that corner. And yeah, he's laying on his back while I'm saying this. So I'm not naive to the pass pro issues here. But, you know, one, two, three. You know, he's got three hitches and he stays in one point. Maybe he can't get up because 94 is right in front of his face. Get up, get to the right. Maybe get that throw off. And that's a really nice chip from, I'm guessing that's Ertz playing tight end. Watch 94. Boom! Right in the ribs. Hell yes. So, tough sack. Next one. This is really a, a tough set of plays right here. Second and seven, backed up on the four. Got whole shot down here to the bottom. Drop. This is a dime. This is straight up dime. Now he takes a little bit of a collision. But you got to hold on to the rock. You got to get us out from under the shadows of the goalpost. This is a beautiful throw. Again, bring in their five person pressure. Five one on one blocks. The ball gets out on time. That's a dime. That's a back breaking drop. And it's a nice play. Nice collision from the DB. But watch the corner down here to the bottom. Whoop. Whiff. So nice release, beautiful throw. Check his base out. Hard to see the base there with the white pants and the yellow N, but it's world class. It's great precision. Watch the timing of it. One, two, three, throw. And then you got to hold on to it. You know, that's to me, that's not an ambulance shot. That's a we're settling you in the hole, body him up, make that catch. You get paid to get cat, get tackled. Tough. That's really, really a tough drop because the next play is a straight up disaster. So it's worth building the context of some of these disaster plays in football where you're like, you know, the next one is a straight up Kyler Murray disaster. This is a Kyler Murray dime. These are back to back plays. So that was second and seven. This is third and seven from the four. Now it's only 14, nothing. And how you go from that to this, and there's no excuse here for the end of this. This is just trying to do too much. If you get caught in this situation, you just eat it, take the safety, and keep this thing within two possessions. You can't turn it into a straight up dumpster fire. This is making a bad play an absolute atomic bomb. This is how you lose games. Now, that being said, okay, let's just check out the pass pro. They drop eight, y'all. Drop eight. The back is in a one-on-one. -on -one. Watch the back. I wish I had sound effects. All I hear is, oh my God. I mean, he doesn't even tackle him to start. He like pushes him. It'd be better if he tackled him right there. He's a, the, the backer is shocked that he gets in that easily. He doesn't know what to do. That is just, oh man. That's just disgusting. That's one of those plays that lives with you a really, really long time. 
The only other thing I could say Kyler Murray wise here, if I'm trying to be honest, they're running a little switch kind of wheel down here to the bottom. Get off that. I'm assuming this is the, the, the first part of this read is down here at the bottom. Let's just assume the read is we're up and we're running out here past the sticks or kind of settling up like a little hook. And we're running like a delay wheel down here to the bottom. If that's not there, we've got a little basic cross in on the backside. And I, I would imagine this thing is red one, trying to get the ball to two. If that's not there or they get depth, let's come back to three. And I would imagine it's not easy to go one, two, three, because it's not like a clean full field read. Normally it would be like right to left or vice versa. So it's a little bit funky when you go inside, outside, back. So again, that's a little bit on the construction of the play. But then again, it you know, there's no easy way to get about it, around it. I think he could get back here. He's got that much time. Now again, you know, does he know he's getting drop eight when he's been getting five person pressure all day? Probably not. But you know, he's got multiple hitches to get the ball out when you're standing in the middle of the end zone. One, two, three, four, five, hitch, 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 sack. Disaster. Bad luck, but my God, that's some bad ball. And you got no chance to win a playoff game when you do that type of stuff on the road. Just no chance. But it's worth pointing out, at least for me, <laughs> that back blocking like that, that's not it. And watch Kyler Murray's read. See how he gets hung on the right? So no, 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 no. Oh, man. So, you know, in a perfect time clock world for me, it would be, Hitch to the right, no, no, back to the left. And really, you know you know who does this really well is Stafford. No, no, back to the left, find the over, find the crosser. Oh my God. Whew. That's a brutal, brutal pick. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. I really do. It goes a long way to helping this thing continue to improve and grow. So I sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't, please subscribe. Please hit the bell. All that good stuff. Then if you want even more quarterback school content, check out all the links in the video description. We've got a quarterback school Patreon community. We've got the absolute premium content over at the quarterback school courses through Teachable. If you are interested in taking your football to the next level, check out those courses. Support the channel via the Patreon community. I sincerely appreciate it. As for the video, let's keep it going. Next one, this is a big opportunity for me now. This is kind of a, a quarters beater up top. You catch this post, you gotta let it rip. And coupled with the fact that he gets outside the pocket to something that I think he normally would do at a really high level, making these off platform throws, using his athletic ability, his change of direction. So if you don't see the over, or if you don't see the big post, this ability right here, you know, that, that's not an easy throw by any means, okay? Don't get it twisted. But this is a throw that he can make. And it'd be a really nice throw. That thing comes off, you can see it wobbling, comes off his hand a little funky. It would be a nice special throw, but he's a nice special player. Well, let's go through the read here to start. Now, we're talking offensive architecture. So everybody loves this fake jet motion, fake fly sweep, whatever. My problem with this, I mean, I like it too. If you catch split field safeties, to me, it's not quite as great because if they don't come down or they don't bite on any sort of run action, you most likely have four deep DB types and only two real vertical threats here and one of these guys. You know, you're very rarely going to run, especially in 12 personnel, get three tight ends like that. So right here, you, you basically waste a vertical threat on this horizontal stretch, which, okay, we can live with every once in a while. We're up. We're almost like nodding into the post. This is a touchdown if he lets this thing rip, in my opinion. Now, you have to keep these big posts nod and keep it skinny. Why do you have to keep it skinny? Because we're getting an over on the backside, and when this half-field defender is not threatened vertically, he's go then going to invert replace, or whatever you want to call that. I'm going to call it invert replace. Get a really nice Polaroid. Okay, so for me, this is a touchdown. If this guy can settle up their overs, it's a potential completion because he's got enough time. He's buying time. He's trying to work there. So, you know, it's just a, a combination of too many of these types of plays, leaving big plays out there. Watch that post up top. Let it rip right now. You can see the safety down here, invert replace. He's going to go run, try to pick off that post. 
But if you keep that post skinnier than that guy runs it, it's a touchdown. The over, I mean, he's got double mailbox up. Settle up in between those two guys right at the bottom of the L. Rip it to him. That's open. Throw it. Okay, we don't see it. Whatever. Make the play on the perimeter. Just too many deficiencies to give yourself a chance against this type of team. Can I also say, see the DB in the top left? This little like gun motion like this with the same hands making the same motion. That's like universal quarters. You can see the nickel or DB type trying to look out there. 45 outside backer. Uh, I mean, rip that thing. It almost looks like he comes to the check down first to 84 to the tight end over the ball versus the over or whatever is behind him with Ertz. But I would love to see that post or overthrown. And I'm not saying that he can't see it. I'm just saying he's not you know, pulling those throws enough to give yourself a chance to make big plays down the field. Next one here, this is a brutal interception. This is on the quarterback all day, every day. The job of the quarterback on just about every type of backfield screen, so even if it's to a tight end, if it's from the backfield, the job of the quarterback is to throw it and give the receiver receiving eligible, whether it's a tight end or back, like a back here, a soft catchable ball. You can't throw a fastball in their face. Now, could this guy, could he catch it? Yeah, but see, he's negotiating through the right guard getting pushed back. See him collision the right guard, his hands are down, as opposed to normally coming out Without that collision, your hands are up, and you can maybe make that catch. But that thing is on him too fast. There's nobody out there. So just have a little bit of touch and put it on him. The other thing, and this is like, this is, might be mildly controversial in the football world, but I'm a big fan of, if you're going to do this screen, I don't know if they do a little play fake or whatever, and you set right here, set the launch point, too many quarterbacks are in the habit of just drifting for drifting's sake. You, you want to set this thing and only drift if you're getting edge pressure at your launch point. So if you're getting edge pressure at your launch point, then you can drift. Don't drift to bring yourself to pressure. So if the quarterback takes his drop, sets the launch point, and then continues to drift, you just make this throw harder because now this guy's right in your face in your throwing line. You have to set the launch point, and then you only drift if you have to. In fact, a lot of good screens are made set the launch point, step up, and find a little lane to flip it to him. When you drift just to drift, it just makes everything harder, and this is a perfect example of unnecessarily drifting. See how that, that right tackle is losing the edge on that slingshot technique. Get up and make that throw, as opposed to drifting into trouble. You're drifting into the technique of the tackle. And you, you, know, you can't throw like a medicine ball as hard as you can right at the guy's face with his hands down because your right guard is getting walked back. So just a collection of errors, probably a little unlucky as well. But at the end of the day, these types of screen picks are always the quarterback's fault because they got to control the throw element of it. Even if it gets batted up like this, to me, this is unrealistic to ask this back to make this type of play. Just throw them too hard. And if those balls are batted down, it's also the quarterback's fault. You've got to control the trajectory, path of the ball, the timing of it, what the arm channel looks like to be able to make those throws. But again, just watch him drift into trouble. Drift. See him drift as opposed to set that launch point. He never sets the launch point. He just kind of continues to drift, 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 drift. Flick. And the flick is too hard. So it's these little details that, man, add up to turnovers and playoffs, just brutal. Really rough. Because I really think that there was an opportunity. I'm a big fan of the Cardinals offense. I think it's fun to watch. Stuff like this, quads, four verticals, ripping that special number three eligible down here to the bottom, middle of the field. Now, granted, it's something like 28 nothing right now, so there's going to be additional space on the back end. But I love this type of design. Get to quads in the league. Get your wide receiver at the number three. Attack the middle of the field. It puts a lot of stress on the defense. Watch what it does to the backer. Watch 51. He's trying to communicate on the backside to the edge player. Hey, you've got the fourth vertical. I've got the third. I'm taking a wide receiver, number 13. 
You've got Ertz. He's the fourth. You got the other guy. Yeah, good luck with that. These are tough formations to handle. And anytime we get a wide receiver getting a vertical release on a backer type, I'm all for it. But there just wasn't enough. There were missed opportunities. There were missed vision opportunities. There were horrific decisions that made bad plays, disasters. But there were some chances, and they were kind of, whether they were vision issues or scramble issues, they were close to at least keeping them in the game until the thing got sideways on that pick six. where It was just really tough to recover from that standpoint. But we'll see what we got moving forward. So that is a wrap. Kyler Murray, certainly a rough day. Now, granted, the Rams are pretty amazing defensively, personnel-wise, specifically up front, Jalen Ramsey, what they were doing on the back end, giving some different looks. And, you know, we missed some throws. And we didn't see certain things. And we made some bad plays into absolute disasters. And so all those things combined get you to getting crushed in the playoffs. So kind of a bummer to see it end like that. Really interested personally, just to kind of see what the Arizona Cardinals can be specifically in the second half of seasons moving forward, because they are so much fun to watch. And for whatever reason, seems to fall off a little bit when it matters most. So if they can turn it around, I personally think Kyler Murray is a lot of fun to watch. I think he's a dynamic, pretty elusive, explosive athlete. That's fun for the quarterback position on a bunch of different levels, coupled with what Cliff does offensively, trying to kind of continue to blend kind of the bones of air raid into a little bit more pro-ish offense and what that looks like as a con season continues to evolve is something that fascinates me so excited to see what they are what they are moving forward as for this one that is a wrap thank you so much for hanging to the end i will see you next time have a good one